Peace. This is Jamal Robinson with 720astrology.com. Today, we're going to talk about the eight phases of the moon, but a little different from what you've probably experienced in the past because we're going to do it from the standpoint of etymology. We're going to break down what those different phases, the terms that are associated with them, what do those terms mean etymologically, meaning we're going to get to their root. So we're going to start with the new moon, the term moon itself. Moon means to measure the setting of time. So when we have a new moon, there is a new setting of time, a new measurement. Basically, the new moon starts a new cycle. The crescent moon, which is the next phase, means to grow. And grow comes from the Indo-European root ker, K-E-R. And ker produces the Greek word chorus. Chorus means youth. So there's a youthfulness about the crescent moon. Something's growing. It's not fully developed, but it is gaining strength. It is fighting for existence. This also is where we get the name Cora. Cora in mythology coincides with Persephone. Persephone is the maiden, the beautiful maiden who's the daughter of Demeter. Demeter who is the goddess of growth and grain and food, coincides with Ceres. Now, because her daughter was kidnapped by Pluto, then she withheld food from the earth. Once she made the agreement with Pluto that Persephone or Korra would spend half the year in the underworld and the other half above ground, then she returned food back to the earth. But either way, the crescent is about growth. Etymologically, that's what it's about. Third phase is the first quarter square. And we're going to look at the term square. Square comes from the Indo-European Indo root cuter, K-U-E-T-U-E-R. And cuter means four. The square in astrology is 90 degrees. So it's a fourth of the circle, 360 degree circle. So it makes sense that the term square itself would mean four. Four also coincides with the Hebrew letter dalit. And dalit means doorway. So when we get to the first quarter square, there's a doorway open and we have to take action. There's a crisis of action, according to Dane Rudyard. And we have to do something because something is being formed. We're being forced to bring it into reality, to form something, to take an action. At the fourth phase, we have gibbous. And gibbous comes from the Indo-European root gib. And gib means hump. So if we would liken this to a pregnancy, the seed is planted at the new moon. But by the gibbous moon, mother is starting to show that she's pregnant. She's getting a little hump in the belly. Now it's official. Everybody knows she's pregnant. She's showing. So there's a thing about growth and learning with the gibbous moon because now the baby is looking to be born. Fifth phase is the full moon. And again, we know moon means measure or setting of time. So now we're getting to the fullness of the measurement. So we're having an opportunity to see the nature of the seed that was planted. Was it planted in good soil? Was it planted with the right intentions? What's the outcome of the scenario or the environment or the events surrounding the planting of the seed? The full measure. Now we can see things. It's a revelatory time, the full moon. The sixth phase is the dis disseminating moon. Disseminating comes from the Indo-European root SE. It's a family it's been broken up into Roman numerals. So this would be SE1, as in C, C from seed, C1. Now, this root is actually breaking down the seminating part. Dis is a prefix. So this is really seminating. So semination or seminating means to sow and that which is sown, the seed. This is also where we get the term season from. Season means the seeding of energy. So when we add the dis, prefix, we are now breaking apart the season. We're breaking up the seed. We're breaking away from the formation of the seed. Previously, we had the full measure. We got to see the revelation of the seed. Now we're going to start dealing with breaking it down to see what's the results, the final results of the processes that began. Seventh phase is the last quarter square. Dane Rudyard said this is a crisis of understanding. 
we must now integrate these experiences back into our reality. So it's another kind of birthing phase here at this square. We are not so much taking an action. We're more so understanding the reality of the actions that have been taken. It's, it's all a learning process. This whole journey has been a learning process. And now we are forced to form an, uh, a philosophy around what has happened. Previously at the first quarter square, we had to form a reality. And now we're having to form a philosophy around the reality that we created. Then when we get to the eighth phase, it's the balsamic moon. Now this one is a little tricky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my whiteboard on this one. So I want you to see some interesting things that gives us a glimpse into what the phases of the moon can teach us about our whole reality. There's no Indo-European root for balsamic, but if we go to Hebrew, we can, we can get us a trail leading back to its origin. So in Hebrew, it would reduce to balm and balm is Siri. I'm going to try to write it. That's a Zadi. That's a Resh and a Yud. And they add up to 300. Now balm means resin or distillation. So it's like taking processing the bark of a tree. And from that, we're taking its essence to create to where's we get this resin. The resin is the essence of the bark of the tree. Another term that correlates to balm is distillation. When we've taken the essence from something, this is how alcohol is made. Distillation, taking the essence. So the balsamic moon is when we've gone through from new moon through all the seven phases. And then finally we extracting something from the whole process and we're getting the essence. What did we learn? Each new moon is an opportunity to set intention and then to extract the results of that. It's a learning experience. But here's what's interesting about this, this word. There's a term metathesis. And a metathesis means we're going to basically take the same letters and show an opposite or a reverse of the nature of this word. So if we take these same letters and redistribute them, the Yud first, the Zadi second, and the Resh last, we now have the word Yesher. And Yesher still has a numeric value of 300, which lets us know it's the same vibration. But guess what Yesher means? It means to form, to form. So this whole cycle is about form and then distillation because after the balsamic phase, we go back to the new moon. And what are we doing at the new moon? We're forming a new reality, a new cycle. We're setting a new timeline. And then as we go through those phases, if we've been awakened and aware and conscious and learning, then we will have the ability to distill and gain the essence of what transpired during those eight phases, those first seven phases. And what happens is we're supposed to be doing this with each phase. We're supposed to be spiraling up. This is Jacob's ladder. We're supposed to be climbing a ladder and evolving and becoming with each phase. Um, Ronald C. Davidson says the purpose of living is to discover the purpose of living. And I think as we dive into something as simple as the eight phases of the moon and contemplate deeper, we get jewels and we see that there's a divine force that's teaching us even in the most simplistic of things. We're getting direction. Just something to ponder on. Hope this has been edifying. For private readings, I'm available through my website, 720astrology.com. Know the stars to know yourself. Peace.